Morgan Chase and Bank of America both in positive territory by more than 1%. Usually the financials lead and give you the direction of the market. That is not happening today, though. Done. All right. Uh, you know, there have been reports recently about deals getting done in commercial real estate. So are things looking up in that sector, or are we going to see a flood of foreclosures? Vornado apparently thinks there's some opportunity. The Wall Street Journal reporting just a short while ago that they're raising a billion dollars to buy distressed properties. They're opening a new fund to do that. Sherry Olofsson is partner and real estate attorney at Fowler White Boggs and author of Foreclosure Nation, Mortgaging the American Dream. Carl Schwartz joins us as well, partner and chair of the real estate practice at Herrick Feinstein. Nice to have you both here. Good to be with you. Uh, Sherry, Thanks, you're guys. basically saying that what we see in the commercial real estate market, in your view, in the future is going to make the residential market mess basically look pretty darn good. Why are you still so bearish? Absolutely. Well, you know what? Commercial real estate has always been a great investment, and it'll return to that eventually. But these are tough times, and commercial lags residential by 12 to 18 months. So the times in the, in the commercial real estate world are about to get a lot tougher. We don't need a crystal ball to see how much tougher. There are indicators we've relied on like what? all the time you, you, for commercial is it just, real estate. Is it just history that's telling you this? What indicators do you see that tell you it's going to be that way? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, vacancy rates up, cap rates are up, uh, prices are going down, revenues, monthly revenues for income properties are going down, delinquencies on loans up, 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 400 percent from okay. last year. So, so Carl, defaults are expected yeah, well, you start, to fall. Carl, take that. You started by <laughs> suggesting that foreclosures are going to be up, which I think is absolutely true because there are a lot of loans that are going to be mature, maturing over the course of the next year or two years. However, that doesn't mean that it's not a time to get into commercial real estate. The fact is that values are what they are. They've come down dramatically. Prices are far, far, uh, finally starting to come down to meet what the values are. If you can find the appropriate transaction, which is a stabilized commercial deal where there are long-term tendencies, this is a good time to be buying. Sooner or later, the interest rates are going to start climbing higher, and inflation is going to take off. This is a time to get into the market. Hmm. Sherry, have anything Absolutely. to say to that? And that's exactly why, well, that's exactly why investor groups like Vernado are standing on the sidelines waiting to jump in. 75% of those investors surveyed are accumulating capital because they agree that there will be huge numbers of commercial foreclosures this year, and they want to wait for that to happen. And certainly there are deals happening. If you happen to be one of the developers who's lucky enough to have, for example, a luxury condominium project that can be easily converted to an affordable housing project, and you can get some stimulus money on top, that's great. That's a great deal to do. But most commercial developers, most commercial real estate uh, uh, investors, and most commercial lenders are making phone calls to law firms like Carl's and mine asking for help. Carl, In fact, it sounds the like the only difference between the two of you is duration and timing. Right. Of course, that's true with everybody in real estate. Everybody is looking at their crystal ball. But the fact is that, so, that when the market starts heating up, everybody's going to be going after the same transactions. They're going to find the same values in the same places. And this is a good time to be ferreting out where the true values if are. If you can find the financing, right, Carl? If, if or do you, you have course. to have cash? Right. Of course you have to find the financing. And the and then and the, the financing levels aren't what they were, but there are plenty of players that are out there that have cash and that need to deploy the cash. Sherry, you wanted to get in well, there, and I could that tell. Goes to, yeah, yeah, no, that goes to you know, what Carl is saying, because I think we're on the same page as this, and it's a matter of timing. But the reason this is a story now is because there's as much as $400 billion in commercial loans that are expected to in, uh, mature in the near future, and even more than that afterwards. And there are three problems with that. Number one, because of the property devaluations and because of tighter underwriting standards, an estimated two-thirds of those loans will not be able to be refinanced. Number two, one of the things that's unique about the commercial business is a lot of these loans were closed with legal agreements like participation agreements, pooling and servicing agreements, and REMIC trust provisions that actually prevent a lender from being able to extend or modify even if they want to. Okay. And number three, there's no mortgage money. So we're going to be seeing a lot of either extensions negotiated somehow or foreclosures this year, Alrighty. making the next year or two a good time to buy. Thank Thank you both. Appreciate it, Sherry and Carl. Thanks for having us. Bill, over to you. Thanks.